suicídio, recessão. Palavras que não saem do noticiário brasileiro há meses. Nada disso impediu que ícones pop como Jaden Smith, a cantora e atriz Zendaya e a eterna diva Catherine Deneuve viessem ao Rio de Janeiro para conhecer um lado brasileiro já quase apagado perto de tantas tragédias. A beleza. O trio, além de mais de 500 convidados, esteve no MAC Niterói para assistir ao primeiro desfile da Louis Vuitton no país. Diante da crise brasileira, houve quem recomendasse o cancelamento do evento. A maior grife internacional de luxo foi em frente. Apresentou aqui uma coleção que mescla o universo da marca com as curvas de Oscar Niemeyer, que assina o projeto do edifício. As lonas de paraquedas dos parangolés de Hélio Oiticica e a estampa da obra A Fera, de Aldemir Martins. Por trás dessa mistura está outra cabeça criativa, a de Nicolas Guesquier, há três anos estilista à frente da Vuitton e responsável por dar cara nova a essa gigante centenária. So, Nicola, welcome to Brazil. Thank you, Maya. It's and a real pleasure to be here. And to start with, why Brazil and why Rio? Oh, wow. Why? <laughs> um, because it's extraordinary, because uh, it's a country full of uh, diversity, uh, because it's very inspiring, um, because the architecture and the landscape is, uh, is unique in the world, and um, has Louis Vuitton is a story of traveling, uh, what can be uh, one of the best destinations in the world than Rio. So <laughs> that's why we're here, yeah. Well, you've researched a lot. You came here before, you went to Casa das Canoas, you went to Inhotim, you went to MASP in Sao Paulo, but you've chosen uh, to work in MAC, mm -hmm. Oscar Niemeyer's Museum yeah. in Niterói. Why that place and what does it have to do with your work? Well, you know, I, I love architecture. As a foreigner, you know, when you see the, the Niteroi, the Mac Niteroi, it, it's think, I think it's one of the most popular buildings in the world, and it's the most symbolic of Brazil. I don't know if Brazilian people like see that, but as a foreigner, this image of that building is so strong all over the world, then I thought it was a great opportunity to be able to show there. So that's, that's why, you know, I, I came obviously for Brazil, for Rio, but I also came here for, for the Magneteroy. And what does it have to do with the collection you're showing in the city? There is many, many, many points that are very important in relation with Brazil in general. Um, when I was there last November, I get to discover a few places, as you said, and, uh, you know, I discovered the work of some artists. Uh, I rediscovered again the work of so, some other artists I knew before, like uh, Elio Chetica. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I get to feel the country so much that, of course, there is a lot of inspiration, you know. Probably the most important thing is this uh, duality, the, this beautiful contrast in Brazil between the urban and the tropical, and the nature, how strong is the nature, and, and here in Rio, obviously, the landscape, and how strong is the city, too. And for me, it's a real inspiration, and I think Niteroi symbolizes that. So, yeah, after I saw the Mac Niteroi, I was like, wow, what kind of girl, what kind of Brazilian French girl, let's say, will, will live, will evolve in, in that environment. Which girl is that? Well, it's a Louis Vuitton girl first, so she's got the codes of Louis Vuitton, you know, she's... Um, She's kind of uh, innovative, she, she loves fashion, so she loves graphism, she will wear colors, which represent the love of Brazil for me. But in the same time, she has a French side that is very strong, so she's quite, you know, sharp. She likes architectural clothes too. Um, she's also a bit casual, you know, I mean, Brazil is the, is, the pay, is the country where I think the body is so important. So it's quite body conscious also. Well, you haven't mentioned one word that whenever people talk about Mac and uh -huh. whenever people talk about your work, they say that. Futuristic. Yeah, it's true. It's <laughs> it true. has the connection. Yeah, I, I love this idea of futurism, but in the same time, I love the idea that it's now and it's 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 in Rio and it's in 2016 and it's the present too. Well, Nicola, when you were 12, you said, "I want to work with Jean Paul Gaultier." So yeah. I am 18. Yeah. And you did it. Mm -hmm. And then when you were 25, you started working for Balenciaga. Exactly. When you were 30, you won the FDA's Best Designer Award. And now mm. you've been for three years in Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you're always the chosen one? What oh. do you have? <laughs> well, that you have to ask the people who, who ask me, but um, I love what I do. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not blasé, as you say sometimes in English. I'm still exciting to see new clothes, new accessories. 
to see how people react to my fashion proposition. Um, I love creativity. I love to meet artists and actresses and directors. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's a job, which is not a job. It's a passion that, that puts you in a situation when you experience so many incredible things. So um, my curiosity probably make a difference. I'm someone quite curious in life, so I'm interested to many things. So I think that's why probably people get curious about me. And then they ask me to design. I mean, it's it's the answer I can I can <laughs> I can give. Well, besides um, uh, futurism that we've talked about, you are also uh, always interested in technology. Yes. In cinema. Yeah. In architecture. Yes. Let's talk about <laughs> cinema then. You have this passion about '80s movies such as Poltergeist or Tron or The Hunger. Um, what memories do this film bring you? And how do you work with them? Most of them are uh, anticipation movie, you know, people that sometimes describe the future or like an apocalyptic situation or very like um, a science fiction experience and stuff like that. And, you know, thinking about it, the, the point, the common point between all those movies are usually an heroine, a woman that shows her strengths and her personality, you know, I don't know, I mean, Sigourney Weather and Alien, for example. I mean, today I'm thinking about Charlie Theron in Mad Max, which was fantastic too. Um, and I love, I think as a child, I was fascinated to see all those women that were strong and, and, I mean, not only strong, sensitive also, but like they were very, like, defining a certain type of heroine. And I think um, it's inspiring for a guy who designed clothes for women to fantasize them as those heroines. Well, talking about your women, you always had very cool muses, such as Maria Melisove or mm -hmm. Charlotte Gainsbourg. Mm -hmm. um, now we've been working a lot with Selena Gomez, yes. which is a completely different vibe. Yes. How do you think uh, the fact that now you're working for a huge luxury brand mm -hmm. relates to the fact that you have uh, chosen Selena? Well, it's, it's also um, because Selena represents her generation to me. So I think she's really cool too. But today the world is more global, the communication, the digital, everything. And she really has a, a voice in that world that is very strong, has an artist, but also has a person. And I love her, yeah, her personality, her style. I mean, she's really free too. She's very... Um, accessible in the same time and she's got this very specific like personality like you know like this this child woman had that is now becoming a woman and i'm super proud and happy to follow her on that so i'm super happy she's a part of of the my louis vuitton story um, on the other hand you're absolutely right louis vuitton is the biggest brand in the world and we are happy to um, have ambassadors, uh, ambassadrices in mm -hmm. French, that um, represent the brand that a certain, uh, with a certain scale. Um, and Selena is absolutely right uh, for that too. Well, she's huge in social media. Huge, so, yeah. Social media and internet had a huge impact in fashion. Yes. Everything changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the time we consume changed, the time we desire absolutely. changed. How does this new speed of fashion impact your, your design? Well, we have more collections, we have more shows. Um, in your creation process? We, yeah, we have to go faster. Um, but in the same time, you know, the beautiful thing takes time. So you have to really be very careful. When I'm doing a beautiful handbags, I know I'm not going to do it in three months. Um, most of the time, need one year to develop a bag because it will last for <laughs> like few years and, and decades by chance. So I really, I'm really, really careful to detect what I can do very quickly because it's a very fashion piece that people will have, will have the desire, will want very quickly too. And the other thing that I will mature and I will make with more time to make sure, um, yeah, they will last longer. So that, that has an impact on the work. Um, and, you know, it's not always, sometimes people think it's negative, but I believe it's positive. Um, mm -hmm. It's like gym. <laughs> the more you do gym, <laughs> the more you get in shape, the more you want to do it. And it's good for the brain too, you know, it's a good exercise. Do you think it uh, changes the way you create a hit? Because you've always yeah. been a hit maker, but nowadays it's more difficult to create a hit because things go faster every time. It, difficult, no, but you have to be more cautious in the editing and how you, know, you, you approach your creation and to identify what is like going to be right for the moment and what is going to be something you can work 
uh, for a longer time. Mm -hmm. And I, my, my personality made, made me, you know, very welcoming for new things. So I'm, I'm enjoying the, the transformation. I think it, it responds to the demand of the world too. I think the world is asking also for different proposition. And uh, I, I'm here to answer that too. It is, it is a difficult thing, period. Well, the same thing about internet and, and social media and so on. We're experiencing uh, another huge change in the system of fashion that yeah. is the see now by now yes. idea. Yeah. Uh, Louis Vuitton is a very uh, old brand. Mm -hmm. How do you see this change? How does it affect the brand and your work? Well, it's a, it's a project and it's like a, it's a process that everyone is talking about. And as everyone, we are uh, thinking about it with Louis Vuitton. Um, the difference probably with Vuitton, it's like since they have, uh, and we have a huge network of retail for many, many years, you know, it's more like more than 460 something shops and stores and, and mega stores. We were able to, to analyze our sales and our growing in a very precise way. So we know um, when we're going to do that or how we're going to make it will correspond exactly of what is expecting from the Louis Vuitton customer. So um, we want to do it, absolutely, but we are going to do it in our way. And I think it's necessary because, because of all those collections, one after another, people get confused sometimes between what they see on digital, mm -hmm. what they see on the press, and they don't understand why they can't have them right away. And so we have to consider that and respond to that to make sure you know, they, they, they keep the attention and the desire for the brand. But I think we are there also to respond to a dream. And the dream usually is not quick. The dream make takes time. Well, you're talking about luxury as products, but what would you say this concept of luxury really means nowadays? It's quite simple. I think luxury means uh, the way you do things, the attention, um, the beautiful way, the knowledge of some people. Some people have the knowledge to do something that some others don't. And I think it's really that, that attention to the craft and the quality of realization. That's the key element. The other key element for me is innovation, means design. You have to have a designer, you have to have good design innovative design that will make sure that those things will, will, will be special and, and unique, even if they are you know, for few people. And I think if you have a very beautiful way of crafting and making things and a good idea, usually you can call that a luxury item. Again, talking about luxury, Louis Vuitton is one of the uh, few brands, few luxury brands that they still talk to a AAA client, mm -hmm. but also to a wider audience. Yes. And what makes it so difficult to do the balance and mm -hmm. what's the challenge to make it? Well, I, I think because Louis Vuitton is such a, a global brand and, and again, it, because it's the biggest brand in the world, it has this situation where in the same time we have to manage uh, access to the brand, that the brand doesn't seem inaccessible, but in the same time we need to keep and to make grow our luxury side and protect that, that um, uh, position. And I think that's also why um, Bernard Arnault, Delphine Arnault and Michael Burke uh, three years ago called me and asked if I was interested to take the job, very simply, because they, I think, were conscious that they wanted to transform um, the position of Louis Vuitton into uh, a position sometimes more innovative than what they did in the past, mm -hmm. uh, even if it was very, you know, fashionable and everything. And, and I think it's the way you have to look forward to, to grow. And I love the fact there is an access. I love the fact this is a brand that gets a lot of, uh, yeah, attention quite early in the life of someone and in the same time that get those very exclusive and unique pieces. So it's hard, you're right, to, be, to do um, in French, we call that the grand écart. It means when you do the dance, you know, you have to spread your legs so large and you have to touch each side. Um, so we have to do that. But it's such a challenging and such an interesting mission for me. You know, it's, it's one of a unique position. There is just few brands around the world that has this situation. So I, I'm thinking a lot about it, yeah. Nicola, we know we work with fashion, we know fashion is always searching for youth. Mm -hmm. And for lots of years you were the young one. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get afraid of getting old? Well, I'm getting old anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
I think uh, probably when I was a bit younger, at some point I was afraid. Yes, it's true because there is always, always someone younger, always someone like that seems cooler. <laughs> But now in my position, you know, I think, you know, when I see young designers, I think it's quite amazing to see them grow and start. And in the same time, a young designer will be in my position in a few years if things go in the right direction, in a way. So I'm just following my path. And um, what is the most important is that I do what I love and I'm very, I have a lot of integrity and I'm very... Um, I do what I really want to do and I'm free to do it. Um, Louis Vuitton gives me the freedom to do it. So I don't feel young or old, to be honest. I feel right in where I am and who I am. So um, I have a lot of respect for some older designers too. And I see the way they grow and they have an amazing career. So I look up also at those people. So um, yeah, fashion can be ferocious and very hard, but in the same time, there is another side that is very beautiful also. There is a, quite a community and a camar big camaraderie of fashion, so it makes me feel good, you know. You once said that the most interesting thing in fashion is that it reflects the time we're in. What do you think our clothes are saying about today? Rio? Your clothes? Today? Oh, my yes. clothes, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. About today? Wow, they, they reflect um, a certain freedom, I think. Uh, they reflect... Um, uh, today, the way people, the life, the life has changed so much. So people want to get very dressed up, and in the same time, they want to get very casual, and they want to get very sophisticated, but they want to be low key, and they want to get uh, luxury, but they want a luxury that is cool. They want everything. They basically. want everything. So my vision is also, I think, to put all those things together to reflect what women want today. Um, and so uh, it's true that it's beautiful to have thematic too, like, like today in Brazil, you know, like uh, the influence of, uh, of well, the body, the influence of, of the colors, the influence of uh, how people will mix swimwear with other type of clothes, you know, like those very interesting mixes are very new and fresh in the same time. And, uh, and each time has, this, has a different proposition. So I'm also someone that is observing what is around me and trying to think and then make, make a proposition with it. So it, I think it's what I do, cool and sophisticated and sporty, but not sporty at all, embroidered. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's this mix, in fact, that is interesting, I think. Uh, it, it's the way, again, I think it's the way women dress today. And I think I want to, to make it more sublime than what it is, but it's what it is at the end. It's, it's, it's women wearing clothes and it's what I'm interested in too. Well, you always say you like scary things. Yeah, That's sometimes. Scary movies, <laughs> scary things. Yeah. What scares you Ooh. in life? <laughs> well, I try to, uh, you know, like most of the people, usually I try not to be scared uh, by uh, what I don't know. <laughs> but um, what, is, what is scaring me? You mean in life in general? Yes. Wow, that's a very deep question. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is scaring me is, uh, is people that not accepting other people, that people are very rash, uh, not rash, but hard judgment, uh, people that are uh, well, very radical and uh, that uh, are lacking um, humanity because of that. I think it's what is the most scary thing in the world, yeah. We are seeing lots of designers giving up uh, huge brands mm -hmm. in order to maintain their, their personal life. Mm -hmm. uh, the la latest and more important one was Huff Simmons mm -hmm. when he left Dior and he actually said he couldn't cope with, with the rhythm. Mm -hmm. How are you coping with making so many collections a year and with the pressure of doing something new almost every week now? Well, I'm very well surrounded. I have people working with me um, at Louis Vuitton and outside Louis Vuitton that are incredible. And I think uh, it's the only possibility to protect your private life and at the same time to be passionate. And I think it's the most important thing. Um, I am, you know, I'm, again, I'm working for a long time and I went through different like time of my life when the work was intense and then less and then again. And so in fact, um, I think I learned that. I learned if you are not well surrounded in fashion, you're nothing alone, to be honest. So that's the way I'm doing that. And I have distance also. 
I love it. I, I love what I do. And in the same time, I, I'm also very conscious that I need to step back sometimes to, to have a better vision even for my work. And, and the more I'm happy in my life, the more I will be happy in my work, obviously. So um, that's the way I do, yeah. What do you see yourself in 10 years, 20 years from now? Oh, the same. <laughs> no, keep going, keep going. The same older, obviously. Um, yeah, I wish I will do other things also. I would love to do costume for a movie at some point. I would love to do, uh, yeah, I'm in crazy project, uh, working with some artists, uh, with some great, you know, uh, yeah, project and, and maybe an architect one day. I mean, this, this fashion world is opening so many doors, so... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to new things, yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you having so me. Much. Thank you.